2.4. We have arrived at the Caramel homeworld and opened talks with one of Quark's business partners in an effort to contact the founders of the Dominion. The terms are not the issue. I cannot help you locate the founders because I do not know who they are or if they even exist. Our only contact with the Dominion has been through the Vorta. I have no idea who they report to. All I know is that the Vorta say to do something and you do it. Why? Because if you do not, they will send in the gem Hadar. And then you die. Hello there, welcome back to the channel. This is Nerd World Empire and today's video is on the Karima or Caravan. Gamma Quadrant species, a member of the Dominion. This is a video continuing the exploration of the Dominion, its assets, its organization, its structure, and its warfare. So, there is a full playlist of this if you want to check it out. If you've not seen the other episodes, the playlist should be linked in the top left corner somewhere around now. And please like, share, subscribe, comment down below, and share this video about us. It. It'll all help in the channel grow if you enjoy this video. With that said, let's get into the Karima. The Karima were members of the Dominion. It's not known how long they had been members of the Dominion, but they seem to be prominent and very prosperous members of that organization. Fairly peaceful members and were able to operate semi-autonomously, as long as they didn't do anything to upset Dominion policy generally. They had very little interaction with the Jem'Hadar, as they didn't really do anything wrong, and only really communicated with the Vorta, very rarely have ever seen one, and all their communications with the Dominion were done via an unmanned satellite, which was a relay communications facility which they would transmit to and would relay information to them. As I've stated before, this method of administration for the Dominion, which was the sort of carrot and stick sort of method, allowed them to maintain order and structure and control over a larger area without needing to impose direct military rule on any one particular power. The Karima were one of these powers. Although not a military power, they were a strong political power and economic driving force within the Dominion, even allowed to trade with what were considered to be hostile and barbaric Alpha Quadrant races coming through the Bajoran wormhole. In terms of physical appearance, the Karima were humanoid, generally tall and rather slenderly built, with skin folds around their eyes, cranial ridges and more skin folds on and next to their noses. They typically styled their hair by sweeping it back and were very deliberate in the way that they spoke and conducted themselves. They generally consider themselves to be honourable traders, not like the Ferengi or trying to screw people over and earn a quick buck, Although it was later determined that they had a streak of that in them, they just liked to kind of hide it, doing things like selling inferior goods to the Dominion, but playing on their reputation of being decent traders, selling good quality goods to basically get away with it and say, we didn't do that, you mustn't have maintained it properly. Trade between the Karima and any of the Alpha Quadrant powers started in 2370 when they were referred to by the Ferengi by the Doci. The Doci had been deliberately sort of outmaneuvered by the Ferengi, who wanted a connection to a more powerful and more prominent member of the Dominion, like the Dosai, asking for a hundred vats of tulare wine, something they knew the Dosai could not provide, but the Karima were able to do it. Later they would also be known to be trading Karima fleece to the Federation. Negotiations were mostly handled by a third party using the Ferengi as intermediaries, as relations between the Federation and the Dominion were not great, but although the Federation was being Honourable in this, it was later determined that the Ferengi were adding taxes without the Federation's notification, and the Karima were all the breaking of trade and negotiation as a result, as the profits were not high enough to justify the risk of antagonising the Dominion. That said, that was settled pretty quickly when the Karima realised it was the Ferengi doing it, not the Federation. Relations between the Federation and the Karima around the sandwich was 2372 seemed fairly cordial, but they were all for breaking it off. And at this point, the relationship between the Federation and the Dominion, something the Federation was hoping would improve through trade and negotiation with the Karima, had begun to break down even further, resulting in the Jem'Hadar attacking the USS Defiant, the Ferengi representative and the Karima representatives who were meeting to try and negotiate a solution to this problem. After that, negotiations and trade pretty much fell off. They were, however, during this period of sort of better relations, the ones who first referred the Federation in its attempts to contact the Dominion to the automated remote relay station that they utilised to contact the Dominion, as they stated that they had little to no contact and no knowledge, really, of the Founders, only knowing that they existed. But knowing who and what they were was a different story. They had never, to their knowledge, ever met one of those likely Founders, had moved amongst them at some point, knowing how the Dominion operates. 
it would be many years later before the Karima would reappear. In 2381, a diplomatic envoy of theirs would enter the Alpha Quadrant and go to Deep Space Nine to resume talks for renewed negotiations and trade with the Alpha Quadrant powers. But, although they were skeptical of how this would go, knowing the history between the two peoples and that of the Dominion in general, they hatched a plan to sabotage the station if they needed to get away quickly. They would then discover that Quark had been appropriating Karima technology, which he then used to expand his business and become some of the core technology and the replicators that he used to franchise his company. Learning this, that he'd stolen from them, angered the Karima. They would abduct Quark, disable the station, and take him away under arrest for trial and later imprisonment. They were stopped by Ensign Tendi of the USS Cerritos. They returned to the station and did renew negotiations with Captain Freeman of the USS Cerritos working as intermediary so that a negotiated 73% of all of Quark's profits from his company and his franchise would go to the Karima in exchange for him not going to prison. And again, they do have some level of honour, but also that they can be bought because, you know, they're ultimately traders and they're there to make money. These are businessmen. The basic idea of the Karima is that they're a high-level trading power of the Dominion. They're basically a great corporate entity, and that's pretty much all that matters to them. Whether that's something that the Dominion shaped them into, or was something inherently natural to their people, I would guess it's the latter of those two options, is still negotiable. It's also debatable as to how comfortable they were truly being part of the Dominion, or whether they were just making the best of a bad situation, but they did seem to make the best of it, and did seem to hold on to their place within the Dominion quite effectively, and didn't seem to suffer any repercussions from negotiating and dealing with the Alpha Quadrant powers, either in the 2370s or in the 2380s for that matter. The Karima are not known if it's, they actually field any kind of military. Their ships are remarkably robust. I am going to do a more dedicated breakdown of the Karima freighters, but their ships are incredibly sturdy and robust, but not particularly well armed, but are structurally sound and quite well defended. Probably because they often tra travel in dangerous areas, you know, Jem'Hadar are around. Best to build your ship at least with some stability so it can take a couple of hits if the Jem'Hadar decides to take a pot shot at you. But their vessels are well built, they're technologically sophisticated, warp capable, and are a very pragmatic, and as I said, deliberate people in their actions with other races. In general, they made good trading partners, which is something, as I said, the Federation did want to renew, and they were a good inroad to the Alpha Quadrant, because unlike a race like the Ferengi, who were always looking to basically screw you, the Karima at least weren't looking to do it, although they were perfectly capable of doing it, if they really had the feeling. Right, so that is the basic profile of the Karima, a race that hailed from the Gamma Quadrant from the planet of Karima. And that brings us to the conclusion of this episode. Again, please like, share, subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and share it around as it's all helping the channel grow. And with that said, bye bye. I'd just like to say a thank you to everyone for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoy making these. If you did enjoy it, please consider giving a like, share and a subscribe and maybe checking out the other videos on the screen right now. And in the description box below, there are links to my other social media accounts.